Good morning, YouTubers. T Square with T Square Talks. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is hump day. It's Wednesday, middle of the week. Um, got a cool, really good video, I think, to talk about. Um, something that a buddy of mine sent me. It was an article that he sent me. Um, the topic of the video is, uh, I don't really know what I'm going to name it yet. However, the topic of the article is a tall tale sign that China could be preparing for war. They could be, but they could also just be preparing for a collapse of the dollar, continuing de-dollarization. Uh, a lot of things could be going on here. We're going to talk a little bit about this article in the video. Um, I, I really like to look and see what the big money is doing, whether the big money is central banks, whether the big money is big banks, whether the big money is big time investors like Warren Buffett, um, all the different big names that are out there. I don't want to really call off CEOs necessarily. I was about ready to say uh, Elon Musk and, and Bill Gates and all these other people. But the truth of the matter is any big money, what are they doing? Uh, big money usually is ahead of the game, whether it's because they're members of an elite group that pretty much knows what's going to happen, it seems like, before it happens. Or if it's just they have a lot of people that they pay a lot of money to to just stay informed on every little thing on what's going on. And so we're going to talk a little bit about China uh, in today's video. Nothing really bad. In fact, smart, really. I think they're preparing for what they see coming down the road. And I've always said if you follow the money, it usually leads you on the right path to doing the right thing because what... The regular, I'll say, news media networks are telling us to do may not necessarily be the right approach. Because uh, if you're listening to them, they're saying, well, now there's 30 extra trillion dollars in people's 401ks, retirements, uh, invested in the stock market, and it's never been a better time to invest. <laughs> and that's exactly what I want to be very careful of. I don't want to follow the sheep to be sheared. And with that being said, we're going to talk about that. If you enjoyed today's video, please take a quick minute to hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And with that being said, let's get started. We're going to talk a little bit about this article today. Uh, like I said, the title of this, a tall tale sign that China could be preparing for war. Now, uh, as you read through the article, I will probably cite certain things. You guys can Google the article too if you want to read it. Um, or I'll actually try to put the link. In fact, I will put the link in the description below. So it'll be the very first thing you see when you hit the more. It'll be right there in the description, along with all the other great information that we post, um, especially our Discord. If you're interested in joining our Discord, it is free to join uh, right now. A uh, lot of opportunity there. A lot of the people that follow the channel are in the Discord. And like I said, it's free to join right now, so you can't go wrong. Whether you're a member, whether you're a subscriber, it doesn't matter. It's all free to join right now. So go and check it out if you have Discord. It's it's worth it. We got a lot of great topics in there. Everything from food prepping to water purification to gold, silver, crypto. The only thing I ask of people, because we are making it free to join, please be respectful because there are a variety of different things that we've talked about. Uh, on the channel and that we still do look at. We do follow cryptos, even though uh, not everybody's opinion on crypto is the exact same. So I do ask that people be respectful of each other. And it's okay to joke around a little bit. We do joke around a lot in there when we're posting uh, silver memes or crypto memes or just different stuff uh, just to kind of tease people. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, with that being said, let's get into today's topic. So, you know, right here in the article that I was reading, uh, a lot of people are suggesting that there's a lot of similarities, a lot of uh, parallels to what happened during 1939 uh, prior to the German invasion and essentially how they were stockpiling resources. And right now China is doing it. I mean, they buying up Russian crude oil loading it up into huge new tanks that are 31.5 million barrel storage facilities and they're basically bulking up while meanwhile here in the U.S. we are 
essentially using up our reserves. We're, we're trying to, I won't say we're trying to deplete them, but we're definitely depleting them and uh, keeping prices of gas kind of low for the time being. But is it really keeping prices down? Because we're seeing inflation continue to climb and we're basically unloading all of our reserves on everything. But meanwhile, on the other side of the world, you have China ramping up storage on every single mineral, gold, silver, oil, diesel. They're loading up on everything. Why are they doing this? Uh, their economy supposedly not doing well is what we're hearing uh, mostly from them, which is kind of interesting uh, to me because if your economy is doing well, then you don't really need those items. You don't need the key commodities or the building blocks of what you produce. If your economy is not doing well, you don't need tons and tons of it. However, there's a couple things I believe that's happening here. There is, first of all, the possibility that what the article is alluding to is true. Maybe they know Taiwan is going to be happening pretty soon, and that's why they've been slowly dumping treasury bonds and using that money to continue to bulk up as much as they can on items like silver, gold, oil, and other building block commodities. But there's also a possibility that they just know, hey, the dollar is continuing to lose value. It may not be losing value against other currencies, but it's certainly not storing our wealth. And it's not storing our wealth, um, the viewers on the channel, the people in the United States, the people around the world. It's not a store of wealth. The dollar, the more it gets printed, the less it's worth. Therefore, you're basically holding an asset that's actually going down in value if you're saving dollars. Um, I talked to one friend uh, this evening. His theory is I get my money every month and I spend it as quick as I get it. Whether it's on stuff that I enjoy to give me a better quality of life or whether it's on coins because I really enjoy it and it does preserve wealth. A lot of people understand that. Some people just don't want to hold the dollars. They understand everything's going up. Just buy your stuff now. Uh, I actually was lucky enough to pull a dryer. I had a spare um, dryer in my storage unit. I'm one of these people that I bought a lot of stuff prior to Cough Cough. And I, I wasn't really buying quite as much on the metal, but I was bulking up on stuff that I thought I would need. I had a brand new dryer that I just pulled out of storage. I know some people are like, dude, that's dumb. Why would you buy a dryer and just put it in storage if you don't need it? It was on sale, I got a good deal on it, and you know it's worth it. I have a second home, also a rental house, so I mean it's uh, worth having. You never know what you'll need, so if you can pick something up on a deal and just hang on to it, uh, it's worth it in my opinion. Um, and so that's what I had done, and I did get to pull that out, and I was lucky to have it because prices on everything is going through the roof. Uh, whether it be a washer, a dryer, a hot water heater, a fridge, a freezer, a car, anything, it's all going up faster and faster. And I think that's exactly what China is doing right now. They realize these resources are not going to be cheaper. If war does break out and they decide to take Taiwan, they know there's a strong possibility that one, they're going to get embargoed. They're not going to allow ships in and out of there unless there's like military escort on every ship. That would be next to impossible. When you think about how many tankers full of merchandise come out of China, it would be insane to think that we could blockade China. And here's the thing. China's not a pushover country. It's not like blockading Cuba. You know, we're, we're talking a major superpower. So I don't necessarily foresee that happening, but let's be honest. In an event like that, is commerce going to be plentiful? No, a lot of people probably ain't going to be shipping stuff. They're not going to be working with other countries. Um, you look at what's happening with, um, well, I don't want to get into the, the whole European war over there, um, what's going on. But, you know, you look at just the way things are. When people go to war, essentially, uh, there's a whole lot less trade done. You know, I'm not going to trade with you because you're at war with a friend of mine. Or I'm not going to trade with you because you're supporting them when you should be supporting us or whatever the case may be. 
Um, and as that happens, I think China realizes that. And the truth of the matter is, I think the rest of the world needs China's stuff just as much as they need our resources. However, I think that they're preparing themselves now by bulking up on that stuff, just like a lot of us buy silver today, because we know it's going to be a lot more expensive tomorrow. And here's the thing. You look at the demand for silver that's out there right now with solar panels, with everything else that they use uh, silver in, it's only going higher in price. And, and it's great that we're getting a little relief in price. We have it down to $29, maybe $29.50, um, depending on the moment. But the truth of the matter is it's still going up. Yeah, we had a little bit of a pullback, but a pullbacks are temporarily. And prices are continuing to go up, you know, month over month, we're seeing higher prices. Um, and we're not really super far off from the 11 year high when you really think about it. And I know some people out there are saying, oh, an 11 year high. Well, it ain't nowhere near the all time high. And that's true. It's not. But also you got to look at what's been happening. We've had gold recently hit an all time high. We've had silver recently hit an all-time high. We've had nickel recently hit an all-time high. Everything is showing all-time highs. Well, silver, still nowhere near it. That's what's insane to me, that people can't understand. But here's the thing. If I was in a position where I could manipulate the system and get as much wealth out of the system as I could prior to knowing that it's going to eventually pop, I would not be in a rush. I wouldn't be in a rush. I would be taking as much as I could. It only makes sense to pick up, to purchase as much precious metals as you can now because you know they're going to be higher. Now, whether that is in the form of silver, gold, even copper, we talked about how you can find copper dirt cheap, free pretty much. Um, nickel, uh, which is a mixture. Nickels are a mixture of nickel and copper. A lot of people don't think about copper and nickel. They think that that's not really a uh, precious metal. But the truth of the matter is uh, anything that's on the periodic table is essentially most of that stuff is all, I won't say it's all precious metals. That would be wrong in saying, but it's all better than paper. You know what I'm saying? So... By saying it like that, I think it's something that people need to keep in mind that minerals are going to be in high demand with creation of products. Even if we go to a full scale recession, depression, it still is a great store of wealth. You look at what happened uh, during recessions. Uh, if war was to break out, oh my word, we would see gold and silver just skyrocket. I mean, you know, and people just don't realize the full... Um, reality of what will happen if some of these events were to come true. So the fact that instantly people are jumping to the conclusion online and saying, oh, this is a sign that we're going to war pretty soon. Like I said in the beginning, I believe eventually they're going to take Taiwan. And that's going to be it. And there's not really going to be a whole lot the U.S. can do about it. Um, because we're all the way over here, they're over there. I know we have ships to go over there and defend, but let's be honest, we are spread out really thin. And right now, I think their whole play with possibly Taiwan getting tons of aid from the U.S., getting tons of military equipment from the U.S., I kind of have had a belief for a while that when I've, when I've talked about Operation Sandman in the past, that some of these countries that we think are our friend and we're defending them, we're giving them money and they're taking it, there's a possibility that they may not even really be our friend. And I'm not saying that Taiwan's not our friend. I'm just saying it's a possibility that a lot of these countries are working together and undermining us. And what I mean by that is you think about it. If, if I'm funding... Um, Let's hypothetically say, you know, we're funding right now Taiwan. We're sending them all this stuff. Well, what if there's not really even a problem between Taiwan and China? What if secretly it's just a matter of um, essentially taking the U.S. out by a thousand cuts, literally draining us of our resources, draining us of our money? Look how much money the U.S. sends to different countries around the world. And it's getting hard on us because we have a lot of issues here. A lot of people that I talk to 
from other countries think, oh, the U.S. has a lot of money. It's not a big deal uh, for them. You guys are rich compared to all these other countries. And to a certain point, we are. But when you really think about it, are we? I mean, I'll be honest. We have a good quality of life. I'm happy with my quality of life here in the United States. But the truth of the matter is, what makes it a quality of life? Well, really, it's because we have so much debt. We just... We're like a kid in the candy store with a charge card, and we are charging everything up. And eventually the bill does come due. A lot of people think, oh, the bill will never come due. The bill will come due, that we're going to have to foot that bill at some point. And at that point, who's going to be around to help us? Now, who knows how things will play out. I found it interesting when I was reading that article about how the U.S. now has $30 30 uh, trillion dollars in new wealth since 2020 till today in the stock market and other investments like 401ks and that type of stuff. I mean, that just shows the growth that we have seen in the stock market. And I've got to ask myself, is that sustainable? At what point when stuff gets so high that, you know, eventually it has to come down? A lot of people think, oh, well, look at the Great Depression. It eventually came back and. And um, we got our money back. If you bought, if you were around during the Great Depression and it got up to its all-time high, which I think was like 3000 and it got to an all-time high, even if it got crushed, you still, it came back eventually. I, I actually looked that up and, you know, we didn't actually see, so the stock market crashed in 1929. It didn't actually come back until 1954 when you basically got all your money back. So there was a long wait where people were kind of stagnant. Um, Wealth just wasn't there. The money that they had put into this, a lot of those people were, I hate to say it, passed away and moved on. Uh, Or they sold at tremendous losses. I mean, you know, you picture an asset that you've been investing in all your life while you've been working in your, your prime. You've been storing your wealth in the stock market, and then all of a sudden, it comes crashing down. Think about that. Right when you need it, when you're close to retirement. The whole point in saving precious metals is because this is a store of wealth. It's needed around the world. Now, I know some people are going to make an argument, oh, gold and silver can come down. You know, generally, gold and silver is money. And therefore, when you realize that gold and silver is money, you know, yeah, the price could come down a little bit, but is it permanent? I mean, usually during any kind of depression and war, yeah, you see a pullback temporarily, but eventually it just goes right back up. And I don't even mean eventually like 25 years from now. I mean, like not long after. The only reason we see that big drop, like we've seen during the whole cough, cough, was because that's paper. People are selling their paper positions. And right now they're convincing people that, oh, you need, you want to get in. Yeah, you can't hide the fact that silver is going up. So people want to get into it. Oh, you want to get into it? The best way to get into it is sell V contracts. No, that's not the best way to get into it. The best way to get into it is buy physical. You hold it. You own it. That's it. You have it. And you're not going to have a hard time. In my personal opinion, if you go to sell something, I would have no trouble selling anything on this table if I wanted to sell it tomorrow. Why? Because people all are starting to want gold and silver. More and more people are wanting it. You know, I will say when it comes to larger gold coins, like one ounce gold coins, my son was actually talking to me today and he he started really liking these little one tenth ounce gold coins. And so sometimes I will work out deals with him. If I see something on sale, I'll be like, hey, yeah, if you like it, you can go ahead and get it, you know, instead of me, or I'll order one for you and you just give me my money back. Um, And the question came up, well, you know, you can almost buy nine of those for the same price of one ounce of gold. So when you think about that, where's that extra one-tenth going? Well, I'll be honest. That extra one-tenth is basically premium. But on the flip side, like I've said time and time again in my personal opinion, a lot of people can't afford an ounce of gold. And that's why I've been finding once in a while good deals on gold coins. People will take them off your hands, but they're going to want a really good deal on them. Why do they want a really good deal? Because 
it's just a lot of money to have to shell out and more and more people can't afford it. But where gold is going, in my personal opinion, I think it's a no-brainer. I still think gold is a great option. Uh, silver, I think, is a better option. I think we're going to go a lot higher with silver. And I think that with China stockpiling a lot of metals and other resources, it's probably exactly what we need to be doing too, us in the stacker community. Keep stacking, keep prepping, stay prepared, stay vigilant. I mean, eventually something is going to break. And when it breaks, it's going to happen fast. And a lot of people are not going to be able to seek cover. When all the U.S. dollars or all the currencies of the world start running to precious metals or to other safe haven assets, that's going to be it. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up today's video before my camera shuts off and it runs out of time. I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys again on T-Square Talk. Have a great hump day, it's Wednesday, and I will see you guys again. Thank you all for watching. Hit that thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys again on T-Square Talk. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think of this video and any topics you'd like to see a video on. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.